What's up guys and welcome to, well, I would say a different video from my channel. Uh, today I'm going to actually review a top 10 video from ManGTV about 10 Pokemon he wish it didn't suck. And it's a rather distinguishable video because ManGTV is actually very very good at making videos. He's an, at 100 million sub basically and is a very very good editor. Sadly some of his videos are bit flawed in concept and this is definitely one of those that really stood out more than the others so much so that I decided to actually respond to it with this very video so we're gonna look at the Pokemon of course the video itself and also go in basically by argument by argument and situations by situations to see why his picks may or may not be as good as he thinks they are so with that said let's go into the video itself an aging face that this world has forgotten Greetings, boogie fans! Michael here. Real quick before we dive into the video, just want to take a second to talk about the sponsor for today's video, a p I mean, I can't be the only one just skipping this usually, right? I can't help it. 10 seconds into the video, and he's gonna start off talking about his sponsorship for today's episode. It comes up as really distasteful, and quite honestly, we've seen other pocket tubers actually utilizing this and implement it into the video in a way that it could actually be avoided, but he actually starts off with it. It comes off as really shallow and pretty distasteful, to be completely honest. There are many ways to do this. This is definitely the lazy way of doing it, and, well, you just keep a pretty big chunk of your video just from the get-go, which is really bad, because this is actually a 30-second well, sponsorship, isn't it? Now let's dive into the video. Many of you know the famous quote by Karen of the Elite Four. Strong Pokémon, weak Pokémon, Okay, calm down, Yewitz. So from here we have an intro, basically, where he tries to quote, of course, Karen, I do believe, in Generation 4, which is, you know, whatever. What a way to make an intro, right? That's fine. Anything to kind of get you hooked after that, of course, promotion of, about your sponsorship, that's the way to go, buddy. But yeah, basically, we're not even into the video, and yet we haven't started an introduction that is actually in a three-minute span already. That's kind of long to go for actually giving an entry. But that said, he makes a bit of a poor mistake here as to actually build up this video. So today, I'm going to be counting down the top 10 Pokemon I wish didn't suck, or the top 10 Pokemon that are really awesome, but are also extremely weak, and I wish they were not as weak as they are. So that introduction actually is fine. What is sadly unfortunate here is the way he decided to put the criteria for these 10 Pokemons. I selected all of the Pokemon on this list from the Smogon PU tier in Sun and Moon. I selected all of the Pokemon on this list from the Smogon PU tier in Sun and Moon. Smogon PU tier. And it's in its alpha state, so it's not a reliable source. Now, for those who don't know, Smogon puts different Pokemon into tiers based on how good they are. Based on how good they are. I find this... I find this really insulting. I really do. The, the thing is here, Smogon does not work like that. It's not work like that at all. Smogon do not define Pokemon's viability more, of course, if you're making posts about them. The tiers are based on usage and usage alone. So, even a Pokemon is used a lot doesn't mean that it's particularly good. It's, um, it's a very, very poor decision to go in with this video with that mentality, because this means that you're going to base your picks on a PU list that is on alpha state, and actually defining their viability on the tier they represent, believing that this makes them weak, which surely they, they are not. They simply cannot be. Such as overused being the best other than Ubers, and then there's UU is underused, rarely used, never used, and then there's PU. PU does not stand for two words like never used or overused. It just stands for like PU. So, sadly enough, several of the Pokemon on my top 10 favorite Pokemon list are in the Sun and Moon PU tier, but I will not be including them on this list because, I don't know, I've talked about them enough already. I want to talk about other Pokemon, okay? Remember that he said that. So be sure to leave a like on the video. It's pretty ballsy asking for likes and comments on the video when it's not even has started. <laughs> Number 10, Golurk. Golurk is such a cool Pokemon. It's this big, tall, ancient automaton that just crushes things with its fists and its feet can turn into a rocket booster so it can fly. That's so cool. Also, it's shiny is, I really like Golurk's shiny. I would definitely like to hunt it at some point. Unfortunately, while Golurk's attack stat is sky high and spectacular, the rest of its stats are 
unfortunate letdowns. It's extremely slow with a base speed of only 55, and its defenses are only a mediocre 80, meaning that it's not gonna outspeed Pokemon to kill it, but it also can't take hits particularly well. In the end, a Pokemon that hits really hard either has to be really fast to outspeed its threats, or it has to be able to take hits. And Golurk, unfortunately, can't really do either. The start here is really, really shaky. It's very, very clear that for him, when it comes to what Pokemon really can be, they're either a sweeper or tanky Pokemon. And for him, Golurk is either, and I agree, it's, it's not one of them, it's a wall breaker, which means its offense is built to, of course, go against other tanky Pokemon or walls who can recover. Now, it has excellent stamps and has actually no guard. It has Stone Edge and Dynamic Punch, very, very strong niches to get rid of Lies of Stealth Rocks and be an impossible spin blocker. A great combination with three immunities, of course, in the normal, electric, and fighting. And um, Manioka Mix Bulk, dude, we are dealing with 90 base HP and du dual 80 in its defenses. Trust me, that's actually fairly high for a wall breaker. It does lack the speed, but then again, it's supposed to deal with other walls, not other sweepers. That's the key definition here. And I think you're missing out on that in such a broad aspect that it comes up as really, really just hastily written. And quite honestly, it, it sounds like you don't get the definition for wall breakers at all with actually this entry. Number nine, Electivire. Electivire has great attack and pretty respectable special attack and speed, but unfortunately that's not enough. Its defense stat is bad, its HP is not much better, and its special defense is only all right. And those combined together means that Electivire can't really take hits all that well. I love that the next entry here is a physical electric type. And it actually is defined as a sweeper, yet he actually points out the bulk is kind of like lacrosse It's kind of supposed to. It's supposed to do damage, not soak. That's, that's actually the point of the Pokemon itself. Electivire does have a really wide move pool, but unfortunately a lot of its best coverage moves, such as Flamethrower or Psychic, are special attacks, not physical attacks. Meaning that if it wants to get the good coverage that it needs, it has to use its lower attacking stat. In addition to that, physical electric types are just not as viable as special electric types. Because if you look at Wild Charge and Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt is better in literally every way. How is Thunderbolt better than Wild Charge on Electivire specifically? I, I, I want to know. You say that, yet you don't explain why. And that's actually kind of frustrating, consider that Visual Tag Electivire clearly is better. So it will be better in every way using Wild Charge. That said, when it comes to coverage move on um, Electivire, well, yes, it does get a plethora of very, very decent moves on its special side, and they are actually fairly viable for the for Zygie, as for mentioned here. It does get the punching move in, of course, Fire Punch, Ice Punch, and Thunder Punch, and we have Earthquake and Cross Shop. There are moves here that it can utilize and utilize really well on the physical side, and trust me, they're just as usable. When it comes to physical electric targets, the reason they have issues is actually not because special electric type are better, it's because offensive Pokemon that deal with electrify, electric Pokemon usually are ground types. That means that they are defensively active and can outmaneuver a physical electric fight. That's why they're not that desirable. That's actually the main reason. And when it comes to Electivire, lacking Volt Tackle, Fusion Volt, and access to only Wild Charge, it's a very weak stab in general. And Zip Striker has the same issue. Lux Spray has the same issue. They're not necessarily bad, but lack strong stabs to do better. So I really think this concept kind of is really flawed. I don't think you you reach out on the beneficial part about the Electivire. I think you're only focusing on, oh, usually you use special attack on it. That's not necessarily true. And definitely with Generation 7 and Seamu being born, you kind of pushing it and only are guessing at this point. So physical electric types just aren't going to be used all that much. Electivire really isn't going to be that effective of a Pokemon unless it gets a substantial buff to either its bulk or its speed. But since that's probably not going to happen, Electivire is just... He's going to continue to suck. So with that logic and focusing just on bulk and electric types and solving the main issue, that would mean Ampharos is the absolute pinnacle of electric types. Yeah, yeah, no dice, buddy, no dice. Number eight, Lapras. I actually don't have a problem with this pick. Fair enough, Lapras definitely. I, I, I myself actually wish it didn't suck that much. Uh, Water eyes definitely are holding it back. So yeah, fair pick. A very, very fair pick actually. Number seven. Lycanroc. So, sadly enough, several of the Pokemon on my top 10 favorite Pokemon list are in the Sun and Moon PU tier, but I will not be including them on this list because- I will not be including them on this list
I actually don't have a problem with his speed or actually, but I have one issue and that is one thing he says throughout this pick. Rock also has non-existent defenses. This thing may be a rock type, but I'm convinced I could break this thing with a toothpick. I don't know why this is an issue actually, because in the start of the video while we talked about Golar, you did point out that a Pokemon is either a sweeper or a bulkier Pokemon with recovery. This one clearly has a strong indication of being a superb sweeper with high attack, high speed, you do say so yourself, yet you complain about the defenses. It's not supposed to take hit. As stated, it's a sweeper. And it feels so weird because you critique about Golurk was that it was either, now we have one that are defining sweeper, that's a problem too. You either change your logic mid-video or you just don't know what you want out of a Pokemon and just complain for the complaining. And it comes out as really, really shallow. Number six, Tauros. Oh my friend, you have no idea what you have started. You have no idea at all. They have a really wide move pool, but the majority of those other moves they can learn are special attacks, which Tauros cannot use if you want it to be decent at anything. It well, this was a load of crap, and actually was really, really bad executed. Things here, Share Force and Life Orb works where really together. No residual damage will come bond with you if you're actually using Life Orb and a boosted move by Share Force. Boosted movies, any secondary effect moves will get boosted by actually proper stab move, which means in total for a 60% boost in your overall attack damage. What does this mean? Well, he said, sadly, that Taurus doesn't get any physical moves that are usable. Well, I'll, I'll recall that we have Body Slam. Body Slam does roughly more than Giga Impact are doing with stab in mind due to the Sheer Force boost here. And what's even worse, with Rock Slide, we have Sin Head, but we have Iron Head, Iron Tail. All these moves are relevant because the possible Pokemon that could wall Toro, such as Steel type, are still affected by this because it also le learns Earthquake. So I get that a very, very relevant move pool. And even at that, it does have a reliable special move pool. While the 40 base might not actually convince anyone of its high special attack, what has to be actually considered here is that. The Pokemon you attack on the special side are Pokemon that have a low special attack or special defense. Which also means that the Pokemon that are defensively capable such as be popped onto Wall Tauros will be heavily, heavily damaged by the likes of Ice Beam or Blister. So it's very, very clear here that possible checks such as course Sissel or anything like that will be o code by Fire Blast from this because it actually gets that insane amount of boost on Taurus already total damage. So Taurus not having a special attack that is usable. Trust me, it does, and it's an extremely relevant one, even in OVU. It does get Sheer Force, which is a great ability, but most of the moves that are boosted by Sheer Force that Tauros gets are special attacks. And as I said before, do not use special attacks on a Tauros. And, uh... and combined with that, Tauros just doesn't have the bulk to deal with faster threats, because while Tauros is pretty fast, there are also a lot of Pokemon that are substantially faster. I agree. Tauros is not that fast, 110 base speed, 48 Pokemons are faster, out of 33 of those can be hit super effectively by Tauros. Yeah, sounds like an issue to me. Even worse, it doesn't have any bulk, yeah, Intimidate is not a factor on Tauros, yeah, it doesn't get that. You know, fucking shit, fucking kidding me? <laughs> Number 5, Typhlosion. What? Typhlosion's special attack and speed are decent, but every other stat is pretty subpar. In addition to that, its special move pool is also very, very shallow. I actually find that really, really funny. Um, Typhlosion's move pool is actually one of the broadest of any actually fire Pokemon in the game. Not only does it have a really, really strong special attack side with Focus Blast, Extra Sensory, Solar Beam, um, what it does get on the physical side of Earthquake, Flare Blitz, Cleoli, and Thunder Punch, it has a really broad visivery of actually moves, yet he says it's shallow. I, I, I get the Zanrog that you're pushing that way, Shallow. I, I'll get that. I actually agree with you. But this Typhlosion can deal with most matchups actually really just fine. So I, this is definitely stretching it. Very shallow. Typhlosion's best move is also Eruption, which, if Typhlosion has full health, is phenomenal because it's a 150 base power stab attack. However, Eruption's power goes down the less HP Typhlosion has, and Typhlosion is weak to Stealth Rocks, which, as we've discussed, really draws a Pokemon back. Yeah, because Eruption is its only viable Fire-type stab, right? With that logic, that would mean that Heatran is kind of shabby and pretty bad then. I mean, come on, you can't use that. It does get Overheat, Burn Up, Fire Blast, and Recapitalize on something. Hell, Fire Blast is the preferred stab, and it's still just as viable as any Fire-type. It doesn't have a high speed of any Fire-type, with all that you believe 
14 in terms of speed. It's, so time flotation isn't as bad as you actually consider it, and with course the forcing of actually that only an eruption as is possible best to move, that's extremely situational. Only share a pick in a situation yet again, and it comes up as it's just really, really poorly constructed. Hopefully Typhlosion will at some point get a Mega Evolution or maybe an Alola form that will make it better. Speaking of which, if you haven't already checked out my Alola form focus video on Typhlosion, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment all your thoughts and everything below. Links on the cards, whatever. Yeah. No. Okay, I'm done. Yep. Yep. You're done. You're, you're definitely done. Number four, Seviper. Yeah, it's a terrible Pokemon. I agree. Nothing to actually, <laughs> actually implement here. Three, Lantern. Okay, here we go. Lantern has an excellent HP stat, but literally every other stat is bad. It is built to be more like a tank with, you know, not hitting as hard, but better defenses, a bit slower, but those defenses aren't good, and it also doesn't even have access to reliable recovery. It does have good abilities, but those abilities are not as good as Levitate, the ability that the superior water electric type Rotom Wash has, because it gets rid of its ground weakness. Do you realize how sad it makes me that between these two water electric type Pokemon, the washing machine is the better one? So yeah, this is definitely where the misconception of viability versus tier really, really shines through. Just because Lantern is PU, it means it's bad. It's very viable in UU, RU, and NU. It is, and it is actually because of that very typing itself and the immunity that it does. Yes, because it does shake water types and deal with electric types really, really well. With very, very few issues. Now, circuitry is a factor in UU as of this video, but at the same time, there is where we're pushing it at. Trust me, Lantern is very viable in those tiers. That said, it's very weird how 76 on special attack and defense was um, mediocre at best when it comes to base 80 gold or here they are really low and bad. Stick to the logic you want. Four base stats between, yeah, that's not gonna change a whole lot. And trust me when I say this though, it has a, what's called a mixed offensive bulk. Uh, that also means that due to its high HP side, it can actually be a mixed wall and be more focused than the likes of Rotom as you decided to peak on, which actually has a lower HP stack by 50, but it has higher defenses. This means the Lantern effectively due to leftovers can be more bulky, even though it doesn't have a reliable recovery. With that said, Rotom Wash lacks, lack, actually lack recovery too. So why isn't it that bad? Levitate short cell isn't everything there. Levitate only helps it against Landers, which usually carry the C-move fly, which as of this moment does make it the only true reliable check to Landers T. So that's not what Lantern solved, but that's the only reason Rotom is OU in the first place. We have, of course, Obedi Learns with Will-O-Wisp. Yeah, that might be a factor, but that's definitely not why. And using Pain Split as a possible argument for actually reliable recovery, trust me, it is not, definitely not on Rotom. So Lantern actually has a lot of offensive options, more than Rotom actually, with, of course, Ice Wind, Mind, Ice Wind, Ice Beam, and then we have a Heal Belt, we have Soak, we have Toxic. Soak, Toxic combo, very, very viable, even in this generation. And, of course, Heal Bell with the Seam of Mind will now fully heal you. So it does have a possible one-time reliable recovery. I do believe you share your picking here and just make an up situation that you think works in your favor. Trust me, between Rotom and Lantern, there aren't that much change between them. I'll even stretch it so far and say that Lantern might actually be even better against more matchup. Rotom Watch is a very, very specific Pokemon for a very specific matchup in OU. And that's where it is. That's where we're stretching viability. It's actually, it's considered a very bad and passive Pokemon. Lantern actually is more flexible between them, and I actually think you're just don't know what you're talking about. And it really shines through here. It really does. Number two, Tropius. Tro I have no problem with this pick. Tropius is a terrible Pokemon, and I myself would really like to see it become better. So yeah, number two pick is actually fine. I like it. Number one, Cast Form. Surprisingly enough, I don't have a problem with this pick either. It really becomes this, with, with this video, it's very, very tough to just be critically acclaimed here, but this is what basically what I think this video should have been all about. It should have been about the Pokemon that actually are considered bad, even outside of a possible tier, because I said it before, PU in his alpha state do not represent the viability of a Pokemon, but this Pokemon is definitely bad, Tropius is definitely bad, and Lapras is definitely bad, Lizanarog is definitely bad. There are picks here that are well-rounded, and I think are just to actually become better, but the other six picks here really, really are stretching it and basically becomes really, really flawed by concept because he's very clear that he doesn't get how these Pokemon fundamentally are working in the meta. And um, yeah, outside of that, the only one thing here that he says did bother me 
I know Cast Form is a controversial Pokemon. I know Cast Form is a controversial Pokemon. No, but almost every pick you did before this was. And this actually makes this video even more frustrating because you try to build up Cast Form as Oh yeah, I'm going a bit twisty here, but it, it's a fair choice. It's a very fair choice, and I don't believe you need to build up. What you need to build up for was when you freaking put Tauros in this... <laughs> so yeah, that's the video, and quite honestly, I mean, as a whole, this video really, really stood out to me as a very, very bad prepped video. I think that what stands out the most. Um, not only with the early, of course, commercial, but also that his picks are based on PU which is yet, of course, B, and as a, actually a, a complete concept by default by PU, but of course also not getting how PU are established. Going with the mentality that Pokemon in PU are bad definitely spoke out there. It definitely felt more like he was going through this list seeing, oh, Tauros is there, or Lan Lantern is there, oh, we gotta pick those. They are they are frustrating. Remember when that was OU? Yeah, that was cool. I think he went by that route, and it really, really stood out in this video particularly, because a lot of these Pokemon aren't necessarily bad. Hell, it's always been talked about Tauros actually being RU. It is still in that same dialogue. Lantern, as I said before, a lot more viable in PU in other tiers than primarily PU. So, I do believe that this is a stressed video that basically just winged it, hoping it wasn't, somebody wasn't calling him out. And quite honestly, as always, Michael does make a very, very good video design-wise and edit-wise, but the facts he's decided to use here, sadly, are based on a tier that is not yet established, and the quotes he's using is from a previous generation who fundamentally worked differently, trying to prove his point with quote-unquote facts that he doesn't get. And it will really, really shine here that he's not a competitive battler, and it bases his every opinion here on a personal opinion, but wanted to back up his personal opinion by fact that he wasn't actually, as of this video, of course, worth using. So, Michael, as always, thank you for making these videos, and as stated here, you do make decent videos, but this really shows that you aren't a comparative battler, and it just, it really comes out that half-assed, and sadly, as a whole, it did actually make me frustrated as a competitive battler, and therefore I made this video. So, I hope you weren't offended if you watched this video, and I hope the followers of Michael who possibly watched this video, you weren't offended. I actually do enjoy his content, but as stated, this really shined through as a person that don't know the meta nor how it works, therefore base his opinion on what he hoped was fact, which it wasn't. So yeah, that was my cat. Hey, I'm not gonna take that away. Thank you guys all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you on the next video. Until then, take care. Bye.